Good morning, YouTube. Say hi. 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 We're just having a walk. We are. We are having a walk and we are going to show you some of the beautiful countryside that we walk through on quite a regular basis. Okay, it's absolutely Easter. stunning. Oh, you found a butterfly. Okay, we've literally just got off the bus. There's a uh, gate up there that you can see where the cars are. We've just got off the bus there and we've walked maybe 50 odd paces. There's a cyclist coming. And we are now in the middle of the bloody country. Look at this. It's fab. This is an old railway track. This used to run from Ventnor all the way through to Cowes. Um, the island line used to be quite extensive. Now it is literally dodged the big pile of poop. Now it is just sand down to ride. It's very, very small compared to how it used to be. Right, hang on, because there are cyclists coming. Oh, they're, they're cruiser cyclists, not hardcore. <laughs> Um, yeah, and the old railway track is now a popular footpath, calm cycle path, calm bridal path, and it gets used extensively during the holidays and during the summer. It's also part of the Walk the White path. So, Wendy, if you're watching, thank you. There you go. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Wendy, if you're watching, we will walk a bit of this. So, thank it's stunning, but yeah, there you go. We've got cyclists, we've got family up ahead that we're following and we've got a jogger coming the other way and everybody along here is polite and if you're a regular people will say hi I wish I could film all of this hi. this whole walk um, but my battery wouldn't last because it's a good three mile walk but shh please no shush you've said hello um yeah I wish I could film it just because I know some of you can't get out and about or you don't live near the country or whatever and I know some you know a couple of you are homebound yeah. um, but I will try and get as much of this as possible it's beautiful well, more people ahead. the only trouble is is when you're walking this with Daryl gabbles constantly the dog is shout don't you Hi! Hi! <laughs> uh, right, said... this field we're just coming up to on the left. Um, several years ago, when Daryl was still in a pushchair, this used to be a maternity field for cows. And, um, you know, we used to we used to walk along here near enough every day. And, um, oh, there's some in there. Brilliant. Wow, um, one year we were, track. we'd come along here and slowly watching all the, <gasps> cows. the cows get fatter. And fat, well, not fatter, but... Bigger and bigger. Really, <laughs> All right, thanks. Really hungry. They got bigger and bigger and bigger and rounder and rounder and rounder as time got on. You, and then one day we were walking out here and I saw I one know. lying down on her side and I thought, oh, is she all right, you know? And she gives this lovely, great big grunt. And um, over the period of the next 10, 15 minutes, she gave birth right in front of me. It was amazing to watch. But yeah, there they are. All lying down. I hope that doesn't mean it's going to rain some more. I can't tell whether these are pregnant heifers or not. They look quite round. Look at that. Can't see any calves in there yet, though. Mom, look at that. Look at what? Look at that big. There's a farm just behind there, and at this time of year, Mom, there is somebody at... staying. I think that yellow building there. I think somebody stays in there. Um, when it's close to the cow's time because when the cow gave birth a few years back when we were watching um, a farm hand and the farmer two farm hands and a farmer yeah. turned up in within 10 minutes of her actually giving oh, birth and um, he, uh, I had to love the farmer because he came up to me and he went well how did she do and all that a lot and I was like oh it's brilliant mate absolutely fantastic I loved watching it and it was a good experience for Daryl as well yeah, yeah. I really don't know if this is going to show up, but over there. Hi. Just. Hello. Just about there, that blue, that blue thing moving. Hello. That's a heron. Hello. Yeah, not now, Daryl. That's a heron, blue heron. Blue heron. Unfortunately, I can't get any closer because there's a fence between me and it. We get a lot of them here. I really hope that's coming out. I don't I think it is, but I'll stick it in just in case you happen to have really good eyesight, guys. Yeah, Sorry about the shaky hello. camera work. No, be quiet. 
Awesome. So we've stopped for lunch at Peddler's Cafe. It's a lovely little cafe. And uh, it's a bit pricey, but, you know, please have a drink. It's the only cafe on the entire cycle track. So uh, it gets very, very popular this time of year. So, they're licensed, so they sell alcohol and cakes and lots of uh, lovely things. But it's done out so lovely, this new cafe. Well, this is normally up to the Beans, crusty cycling shirt. And then there's seating outside as well. It's got to be a coffee minute as well. So this is where we are. Hi. Okay, we're in New Church. The red dot there, Langbridge, which is exactly where we've just stopped between Langbridge and Horringford to have um, lunch. And so we've done hi. one mile and we're on the second mile of our journey. And this part of the cycle track is very, very different. It's more overgrown. You can tell we've had a lot of wind because the um, footpath is a bit of a mess. Hopefully there are no trees down. I've seen a lot of cyclists, so um, we should be good. But yeah, this, this part of the cycle track is very, very different. It's been allowed to get quite overgrown and you don't see as much of the surrounding countryside, but you still get to see quite a lot of wildlife, which is really nice. Over there, we've got some stuff growing. You get blackberries, brambles, you know, nettles. Um, we've got a problem with some kind of weed I think it's a Japanese knotweed or something it's, it's there's weed. the river down there yeah we get a lot of ducks down there yeah we get herons we get all sorts along here it's and, fantastic we also get squirrels too. so you too. what are you saying then YouTube is raining yeah it's also come over all grey and miserable while we were having lunch so we might get wet. You can't even see it on the phone. The black. I can see it. <laughs> There's somewhere right above us. I can't find it through the phone. There it is. There's a bird hunting. He can some... hear her. But... I think she wants to go. <laughs> oh. oh no. She's hovering right up above me. That little black dot. I think she's in. So we're stranded under trees. It's absolutely pissing down. It was beautiful when we left home. But um, yeah, it is now grey clouds and it is really coming down. We're standing under some trees, a little dry bit of earth. But, and um, yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to have to pay my son to come pick us up because we'll get soaked if we walk home in this. He's only got a lightweight jacket on, it's not waterproof, and I haven't got anything. I'm literally in a vest top. That's not good. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether to wait and see if it clears up. The weather app says it's not going to. Didn't say all this this morning. Or whether to just phone him up and say, please, can you come get us? Mom. Oh, dear. Oh, it's wet. It's getting a bit cold. <laughs> But there we go. Just up ahead is a little sort of bridge thing. There's workmen here. I don't know what they did. They were here a year or so ago. So I don't know whether the bridge is uh, having structural problems or what. But yeah, we're soaked. I'm cold. Oh dear. <clears throat> I'm getting wet. Getting wet. That's what he said. I'm getting wet. It's his Hi. idea to keep going. Hi. But he's getting wet. Yeah. <laughs> so. Why is he doing so wet? What we're we gonna do for a wet? We're gonna go home and have a nice hot bath, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. There's you. the bridge. Hey, the water goes away from us. Apparently, they're a diving team and they're um, reinforcing Hi. the banks to stop the bank from falling into the river to help the wildlife. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that cool? And the man's are in the river. <clears throat> man's are in the river. It's like wow. And um, I've just met David Ike <laughs> and survived. I've lived to tell the tale. Stuart would be so proud. <gasps> wow, if you don't know who David Ike is. <laughs> Google him. His surname is I-C-K-E. He's a 1980s television personality and he lives here on the Isle of Wight. And um, he used to believe in lizard people and that he was the son of God. Yeah. I don't know if this is an actual mill or anything, 
but it's a beautiful house just over to the right hand side and then the water comes down all these little bits and bobs yeah. at the end of their garden you get ducks here and yeah and look at those two waterfalls little waterfalls aren't they yeah but yeah that's, that's great big waterfall we've and almost finished the second mile come on then and the river continues on down that way now this house here used to be the um uh station master's house yeah I and it was, um, it was bang now. on the platform where their van is parked in the, the side of the house was the platform so here we go we are now at alveston now we're at so, well, we did it we did it we've done two miles now haven't we yay, yay. We did oh it. the board's gone there used to be a board here that actually told oh, they've put a thing on the there Oh, it's still here. Oh, awesome. Oh. This told you about our sensation. So, yeah. there you go. There's a picture of the house. And that's a picture see? of the train. Then, hang on, I'll just zoom out. There you go. You can see it's the same. You but, yeah, see there's a picture of the house. That's, that's and it a... tells you that you are standing on the track bed of the old Newport to Sandown line, facing what was the only platform as the penultimate and stop of eastbound train. trains Alveston Station. Yeah, that's the station was closed and train services were withdrawn on Monday the 6th of February 1956. My mum remembers getting this train, you know. The line's demise thus predated the mass axing of the railways attributed to Dr Beeching, which took place in the early 1960s. The current structure isn't no, the original no, wait, station wait, wait. building sh erected a year or so after the line opened in 1875. No, no. The first station house was of poor quality and was condemned in 1909. The photo on the right shows the newly built station in 1911 to 1912. The new building incorporated the station master's house as well as a booking office and waiting room and was completed at a cost of £125. A new platform made of earth and clinker replaced the original wooden one at a cost of £15. Being the station master slash mistress here called for considerable versatility and flexibility. Alveston's best known incumbent, 1899 to 1914, was Mrs Fanny Young, pictured. That's her there. That's it. was quoted thus I issue tickets, manage all the signalling open the gates and wind up, wind up the lamps I am provided with cardboard tickets available as far as wide pier head if folks wish to travel beyond the island I have to write them out paper ones in the winter I am not so busy as in the summer as the trains are less frequent I go on duty for 12 and a half hours but I am not overworked as it is not constant from Wanderings in the Isle of Wight by Ethel Hargrove published by Murrows, London 1913 no. The platform facilities were upgraded when the Southern Railway took over the line from the Isle of Wight Central Railway in 1923 and a, and a series of collisions necessitated periodic renewal of the level crossing gates. Parts of the house were modernised when it became council property in 1962 but the building itself has changed little since the days of the railway. The present owners are gradually restoring it to its, past, to its post-1948 appearance. And there's actually a... Uh, email address if anybody is you know curious about anything and there's the photo of the house there hey, no. so it hasn't changed much over no. the years no, let me and I'm something. pretty sure that those might be original hey, no. so, but that's the house yeah. I think that it's extension fine. is new I love that they've put a little sort of ticket office thing there now I think that's cute that didn't used to be there um, but there you go this is the house and that's the I think these are original, well, maybe not original, original, but get replaced no, regularly. Here. And then you cross over this road. Yeah, I go this way. And it's called Station House. Yeah. Isn't that fab? Look at that. Um, and that's the whole thing. And that's the footpath we've just come down. That's the road. The and that's the last third of this bit of, well, this section anyway. And this is a mile long as well. Um, we're doing quite well. So we've done two of the three miles on the footpath anyway, and then we've got the little bit on the road to get home. Um, sun seems to have come out again, or is trying to break through, but we are walking towards more clouds. We're not soaked. I'm damp, you know. I'm damp! you damp as well, are you? But I'm not actually, you know, wringing wet. My I'm my jeans wet. feel 
a little bit cold really more than anything else. Um, he's doing really well. It's been a while since we've walked this. We haven't walked this this year. So it's something I wanted to do regularly these holidays and then maybe go the other way through to Newport as well because if we get off at the same place but go the other way on this path through to Newport that's five and a half miles and he can do that with ease really really easily. He's a very active young man. So yeah but oh it's lovely. Smell that petrichor. There's some moo cows over there. Let's, let's, there's two cows there. Lots of cows over there, aren't there? Yeah. Look like um, Angus. They like. This is, uh, this is this section. Maybe kill cows. Beautiful hitch. Beautiful here. Beautiful. Just got the houses over there. That's the station house just past those trees there. So, and then that's the way we're going now. Now at Alveston Mead Nature Reserve and there's a building over there which is a hide so you can come out and watch the birds and I think that's you can sit in there and watch the squirrels as well. I don't know how to get to it though. Um, a friend of mine keeps meaning to show me and just haven't got around to it. So, yeah, but you can see loads of things here. Come on this way. I told you to stay over on the path. But yeah. you don't listen. That's the river down there. We've just crossed over the bridge. It's all yeah. overgrown this year. It's like more, loads, more, more loads of um, water rushes and that in it. Um, and look at that grass. Mm, all, the grass all the grass growing up in the river. So normally you see ducks and stuff down here, but I haven't seen any this year. It's a sculpture, apparently. This is a water processing area, I think. I don't know, I don't know exactly what they do here, but there's cameras and security, and I never see anybody here, ever. In all the years I've been walking along this path, I never see anyone. But yeah, there's cameras on there, pointing in all directions, watching your ass. Uh, yeah. It doesn't even really tell you what it is. It's, Oh, a river gauging station. And the river is the Eastern Yar. Oh, I forgot to mention that, didn't I? Yeah. No, no swimming, no diving, strong currents, and there are underwater obstacles. So there you go. That used to be accessible by the public, so you could go over into that side of the river. Um, but it's not anymore. It doesn't even look like they use it much because it's got plants growing up through it. So this is the last section of the path. The river is all, this is all just left to go naturally wild, this. It's part of the reserve. That's great. The river's just, just down there. But all of that over there has been left to just do its thing. And it all stays remarkably nice and tidy. So, yeah. But we're nearly at the end of this three mile well, three miles on this path anyway. Then we've got to go home, which is going to be about another half a mile or so. Maybe a little bit more. But yeah, it's been a nice walk even with the rain. See this? It's been carved out by one of our local people. And if you go over that little bridge and follow it all around there, you'll end up in Sandown Community Orchard. And uh, basically, you can go and help yourself to any of the apples or pears or anything that's growing down there. It's a lovely little orchard. But we are just coming to the end of this bit anyway. Oh, I ache. It's been a while since I've done this. Daryl, could you please get off of the long grass, which is soaking your shoes? Move. No, Move. Then. So we are at Longwood Lane there. Yeah. The next stop is Perome Way, which is, hang on, I'm just moving so you can see it. So we are here. Next stop is Perome Way, and then Sandown Station, which is where the old um, steam railway used to meet up with what is now the current railway. Another road crossing just coming up. This is the big water processing plant. This has been here as long as I can remember. It filters it all and, you know, what? provides it for drinking, yeah. I believe. What? Yeah, I can hear an error. Hey, Carter. I 
where they're going. <laughs> yeah, this is the big water processing plant. So we're now just on the last little quarter of a mile into Sandown. Um, we had two choices back at that crossing, whether to go along the road into Lake, which is where we live, or whether to continue on the last little bit and then head in that general direction. And we're going this way simply because there's a pavement, or sidewalk as you call it in the States, um, for us to walk on, whereas there isn't back there, and it can be a little bit dangerous. So at least along here, we get to spend a little bit more time in what feels like countryside before having to deal with cars again. <laughs> we're doing something new. We've not done this path before. This is a bridleway that takes us a little bit further on in our journey, apparently. This is bridleway. So um, it's heading in the right direction, but I've got no idea where it comes out, funnily enough. To our left is a caravan park. Wow. All statics. There's no, um, I don't believe that you can have tents in there, but it's one of those ones where you have holiday makers and residents. There's quite a lot of residents in there that live there all year round. We are now in the country, in the forests, look. Beautiful, love it. Whoa. Surprisingly, not that muddy considering the amount of rain we've had recently. I hope that stays like that, up. otherwise, yeah, this is taking us home. Um, otherwise, we may have to double back on ourselves. So, we'll see. Isn't this beautiful? Look at it. This is fun. Yeah, listen. Is Trish and listen isn't in Daryl's vocabulary. And I'm home. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, my battery ran out, so I couldn't actually show you any more. But yeah, we're home, and um, that was a little walk that I used to do every single day. La uh, well, really, since Daryl was born, I started doing it. Um, it was a lot easier with the push chair because obviously I had something to lean on and. I wasn't chasing a small boy all over the path, but um, he was very good today. He really enjoyed it. Um, it's the first time we've done it this year, and I was doing it, you know, all weather before. But then he was in a push chair, and it didn't matter if it rained because he stayed covered, and and it was only me that got wet. Whereas today we both got wet. I've just got out of the path, so <laughs> I'm feeling a bit ill. Um, so yeah, no, really enjoyed it. Really nice walk today, and I hope you enjoyed your little glimpse into some of the Isle of Wight. See you later, guys.